like when you oh, go up out. there too there's a lot of great food mm -hmm. so oh look see we've got um some questions up this will be good mm -hmm. and look at the I, addy's handwriting is amazing i know it's and very that's clear with the left hand hey i'm a lefty it's all smudged and stuff right because you, you, your hand moves across the board i feel like there are more lefties here at cinder than righties I don't know. I hear it's five o'clock. Is it five? Not yet. Oh. <laughs> we don't like to be early. Full start. That's fine. They, they normally give me a thumbs up that it's five o'clock and that's when we do our big intro. Right. I'm kind of, uh, I'm loud when I do that. It's so. Great. Olivia, are you gonna do this soon? Do one I, of these? I got booted last time, so. Nice. Right. Oh, that was you? Was it? Are you nervous? I'm going to be nervous. Got Addy here on tech. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I think we're going to start in about a minute. Yeah, it's time. So you were the captain? Two years. Impressive. Thanks. Did your parents play tennis? Nope. That was one of the reasons I wanted to do it. <laughs> so they couldn't pester you? So this is how I used to do it, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> Let me show you. That's not the right way to... That first serve's got to be... That's when you really go for it. Now the second serve, I want you to be, con more be conservative. Consistent. Yeah. More conservative. Yep. Have you ever seen pros play? Yeah. We're going to... I went to Wimbledon. You, you did? Yeah. Right. Here we go. Hello, everyone, live from Garden City, Idaho. This is Joe Schnurr beaming to you from our Cinder Winery tasting room. And today I am joined by the wonderful Riley Clayu. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. We are so excited to have Riley with us as we taste some Chardonnay. And I'm going to tell you people look, right now, grab that 2019 Chardonnay. Let's open it up and let's taste it. Riley's gonna pop the bottle and I'm gonna help us all get to know Riley a little bit better. Um, you're uh, on our team, you're a superhero. We need to hear your superhero origin story. Please. So, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Boise, Idaho, but I went to school over in McMinnville, Oregon, which is in the Willamette Valley. So, that wine region I know pretty well. Yum, and there's a lot of beautiful Chardonnay over there. So it's really nice that we're tasting Chardonnay today. Club members, exactly. very, very cool. What cool people. Um, and so you're, you're popping the Chardonnay. I I'm am. super excited to get a little bit of this in the glass. It's gonna be great. This is 2019 and there's a lot to discuss today about the style of Chardonnay that we've created and how it's evolved over the years. Now look at this, we have our Sizzler sneeze guard right here because we're COVID safe and you're gonna go for it. Go for it. I'm gonna just send it. See what happens. Good. Oh my gosh, we did it. Oh my gosh. That's the first <laughs> ever wine in the history of Facebook poured over a COVID safe barrier. So cheers. Um, let's cheers into here we go. the barrier. Into the bar barrier. Cheers. Hmm. Not too cold. I like just a slight chill on the Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. And as we enjoy the wine and talk about it and see what questions Riley might have or what questions you might have, feel free to shoot us some of your favorite pairings, some of your favorite characteristics of the wine or any questions that you have in general. We're here to uh, you know have some fun and learn a little bit more about this wine. Um, and Riley, you were in Oregon. Mm -hmm. You're tasting lots of Beautiful Chardonnay, I'm sure, on the weekends as a college kid over there. And what else were you doing? I played tennis while I was there, and I was the team captain. Team captain? What's your What was your team name? What were you? We were the right. Linfield Wildcats. The Wildcats. Yeah. Captain Wildcat. <laughs> awesome. Well, Captain, uh, you're back in Idaho. You're yeah. enjoying wines here. Um, just a little, just an FYI, Steffi Graf has a house just a couple hours north of Very here. Very cool with Andre Agassi, so um, one of my life goals is to pour some Chardonnay for Steffi. Um, so Spend we're gonna, some time up there with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're gonna see see how that goes. Uh, all right, but let's, um, let's taste this Chardonnay. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And let's get into talking about Chardonnay. So, as we all know, right, Chardonnay, the most popular wine in the world, right? I mean, by far in America, the most popular wine. Not even close how much Chardonnay is made. And um, with so many of uh, people that get into the industry, you often find that there's sort of like a manual that's handed to you when it comes to Chardonnay, when you start to make it. And the manual sort of reads something like this. Warning! You know, this grape is delicate. This grape is not powerful. You must manipulate this grape to make it interesting. And I think you and I were talking earlier about how these characteristics, these traits that come from manipulating are often what you're experiencing when you drink Chardonnay. Um, one is oak, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. And so when uh, the, the Coopers, when they toast an oak barrel, they create a sugar layer inside the barrel. Um, and it's all these complex carbohydrates are basically caramelized, kind of like when you take an onion and you put it on the grill and you caramelize that onion, you turn it sweet. Same thing happens inside of a barrel. So this is a similar process to when a barrel is charred for whiskey. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's toasted. A little bit lighter heat. The sugar layer is created on the inside. It's that sugar layer that dissolves into the wine. So if you're reading that manual on how to make Chardonnay, it says you have to manipulate the wine. You really have to make the flavors and aromas bigger because the grape is so delicate. And what you'll often get from that oak is flavors of vanilla and butterscotch, butter, allspice. And there's another technique that they also talk about mm -hmm. in that man that says warning. Boring grape, Chardonnay is a boring grape, which is not true. Uh, and, and it'll say, do some leaves stirring. So do you know what the leaves are? I don't. Can you explain oh that to me? Yeah. So the leaves are the little yeast babies, mm -hmm. little bodies cruising around. They're eating the sugar and turning the sugar into alcohol and CO2 and heat. And after a while, they die. They settle to the bottom of the barrel. They're no longer, there's no longer any sugar left for them to eat. And winemakers will often stir those dead bodies. It actually breaks the yeast body up and fatty acid comes out of it. And that process fattens up the wine. Okay. It will make the wine richer and creamier, more buttery. So we have two examples there of making the wine bigger. And what happens, what's really interesting is when you do lees stirring, that diminishes the already very delicate fruit aromas. And then when you add the oak flavoring, you'll really end up adding such a powerful component that it can really completely mask the fruit aromas. And we've had, we've all had Chardonnays like this, right? I mean, the predominant aromas and flavors come from the oak barrel. So that's not the case here. Right. Let's taste it. I want to hear from you out there in TV land, what predominant flavors and aromas you get. And as you're sipping and thinking of that, I'll tell you that for many years, Melanie, my wife, our winemaker, our head winemaker, created a Chardonnay based somewhat on that manual. But about four years ago, she decided, you know, it's time for us, the winemaking team, to really sit down and sort of unpack some of these assumptions. They did a lot of blind trials where they did small lot productions of Chardonnay and noted the differences between French and American oak, less French oak, all stainless steel, no leaves stirring, more leaves stirring, more malolactic acid fermentation, and less. And it was really interesting because over those four years, as they saw these differences, they realized that they wanted to push the results, wanted, uh, drove them to push the style in a different direction. And that direction is sort of been finally reached here on this year. And in this wine, we have no new French oak. Mm -hmm. We have neutral barrels. So do you remember what neutral barrels are? Do you remember that yet? Neutral barrels are when they have been used enough times that that caramelized layer goes away. Absolutely dissolves. right. 
team, team captain gets an A plus on that. Well done, Riley. Thank you. Yeah, so that layer is completely gone. A neutral barrel is a lovely vessel to hold the wine in. It lets the wine breathe a little bit, mm -hmm. which results in a little bit more structure to the wine. But really, there's no imparting of uh, flavors like the butterscotch or the vanilla that can cover up the fruit aromas. So then we also have uh, stainless steel. I think we have about 60% neutral barrels, 30% stainless steel in here. Stainless steel, do you remember what that does? That's a trickier question. I don't. Okay, so here's the cool thing about stainless steel. There's no pores at all, right? So in with a barrel, there is oxygen going in and out of the wine very slowly. Mm -hmm. With a stainless steel barrel, there is no oxygen moving back and forth it captures all of the fresh fruit aromas. Okay. So if you ever have a 100% stainless steel Chardonnay, that's going to be all fruit, right? It's gonna be completely crisp. This has got about 30% stainless steel. And then the final small amount, 10%, and that's what I want you to sniff for here. See if you can pick it up. 10% of this is in what, Riley? Black locust barrels, new black locust barrels. Yes, very good. So black locust is a barrel, is a, a wood that is only recently starting to be used in white winemaking. It's really fascinating. Our winemaking team has been using it for several years now. We've fallen in love with what it does to the wine. It's really, really delicate and light and subtle. I get a little bit of toasted coconut mm -hmm. with it. There's a little bit of a citrusy quality to it as well. Absolutely. I'm gonna get some, we get some fruit in there. I hear some people picking up a little bit of mango. I definitely get that. Mm -hmm. So there's fruit in here, little toasted coconut from the black locust. And ultimately what the winemaking team said to me was, Joe, this is, the best way in the Snake River Valley, they believe, the best way to make Chardonnay that really respects the fruit. And I think I think they're dead on with that. I've, I've enjoyed our other vintages of Chardonnay, but I really do feel that this this change in style is, is the best expression. I agree, it's a very clean and pure expression of the varietal. That's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. Um, okay, so, um, What's your favorite thing to do with this wine? Riley, you gotta tell you gotta look out there and tell these folks what what is your favorite deal? The other day I just made a butternut squash soup with some crispy sage and some crispy pancetta on top. And it definitely paired really nicely with this wine. Yum. Yum. Now, am I right that you're enjoying your time here at Cinder? I am. And what have you got going online? Tell us about that. I have a food blog called Sustenance and Spice. So I like to do food and wine pairings. Check it out, Sustenance and Spice. Dot and com. who are your guinea pigs at home that you're normally cooking for? My parents. So these are the same people that... That brought me here. That brought you here for the very first time. Yep. And which led to your job. And then recently they took you on a little field trip, didn't they? Yes, we just came back from Walla Walla. So we got to experience the Washington wines. These are good people. These are cool roommates to have. They are cool roommates to have. And what are you doing right now? You're, do, you're working here. I'm, you're doing sustenance and spice. Mm -hmm. And you're also taking a new direction. Yes, I'm getting my MBA right now. So busy at Boise State, taking some classes. Slacker. I know. <laughs> Total slacker. Ta key, uh, team captain and everything. Um, yeah, I'm getting some lovely... I get good citrus notes here my favorite pairing in the world with chardonnay especially with this chardonnay is halibut i like a nice halibut with maybe just a little bit of lemon after i've baked it it's gorgeous but what's really lovely is how well this pairs with different types of food have you noticed that yeah i agree it's definitely very versatile we're always looking for that Chardonnay seems to be super versatile. Oh, here's a question in from the Ethernet. As a younger person, do your friends drink Chardonnay? I don't find as often that my friends drink Chardonnay, but it might be because they just haven't found the one that they like because I think it is a very diverse wine and it has so many different characteristics to it that could lend itself to a younger person to like it as well. Good so you point. just haven't found what you're looking for. 
All right, so keep keep pouring Chardonnay for your friends. Yeah, definitely try this one because I like this one a lot more without that super oakiness and it's less heavy. So uh, another question is, how do you describe a traditional Chardonnay compared to cinders? Well, I guess when when I talk about traditional Chardonnays, I'm mostly talking about American Chardonnays from California. And of course that's could be, it's not necessarily traditional in the global scheme of things. Um, but if we talked about that style, because that's the one that most people are gonna encounter in the grocery store or on a wine list in America, I'd say that that Chardonnay is way, way bigger than anything we could ever create here. Not just, uh, not just the oaks, the style of wine uh, and how much new oak is used, which we kind of talked about earlier, but also just the grape itself. It's going to be way riper. I mean, the dominant growing regions in California have much, much longer ripening seasons. So the sugar levels are going to be higher. The flavors are going to be more developed. Uh, I would say this, I like this wine and this style. It really strikes a balance. And there is a little bit of structure in here, but there is also, um, you know, in the glass is a wine that really respects the fruit. And that's what our winemaking team was trying to do. You know, they realized if they moved this to this this style in this direction, what was happening was that the, the fruit was being being allowed to come front and center, which is nice. Um, oh, what do we see? Another question coming in. Why oh, that's why is Chardonnay such a California fad? Well, this is a little bit similar to what we just spoke about. Right. I don't know if it's necessarily um, a fad. The it, I think it might be the case that just many of us, when we encounter a Chardonnay on a wine list, it, it could be a lovely Chardonnay. It's going to be from California, and it's going to be a certain style. And they have excellent growing regions for them, and they make them in different styles, but often the ones that you'll encounter... In, in the restaurant scene are going to be ones that have a pretty pronounced oak profile. A lot bigger than this, even a lot bigger than any of the other vintages that we made in the past. So, good question. I need a little a little topper. Can we do it again? We're doing yes. it again. We can do it again. I believe oh in us. Oh my gosh. See, this is good because it prevents your bottle from touching my glass right. either. Boom. Boom. Is that Look enough? at the expertise. Yeah, that's great. Okay, good. Is that, were, are you so good at that because of the overhand serve that you were really... Totally. And it came from my, my lefty power. Oh. Right. Did you serve with your left? You're a lefty? I'm a lefty, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Surrounded by lefties here. It is the strangest thing. Oh my gosh. We have a lefty on the whiteboard today. Um, and they're writing another question. And of course, I can't see it as she writes it because her goddamn left hand is in the way. <laughs> <laughs> now she's giving me, she just shot me a look behind her mask. She's giving you the eyes. What do you recommend with, with see the left hand is in, with, with maple syrup. What do you recommend with maple syrup? Mm, maple syrup in the, well you have the food blog, so say you have this wine mm -hmm. and one of your uh, secret ingredients is maple syrup. Maple what are you going to do? Canada, needs, Canada to know. needs to know. I love that. I would think that maple syrup pairs very well with bacon. So you could do something along those lines. Um, maybe like a maple syrup vinaigrette with some crispy bacon on like an arugula salad. Still pretty light, not super heavy. <laughs> ace. That was an ace. Um, much more creative than me. I was thinking I could drink this wine at brunch. That's when someone said maple syrup, something like that. Also, French toast, justifiable. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a wine you can drink by itself. It's not so powerful that it demands food or, or, or something fat uh, to to kick back on the tannins. It's definitely, I think, you can go down the salad road. That's what that's where Riley just went. Um, very nice. Uh, I hope that one of the, what one of the things happens with this wine is you fall in love with it, appreciate it, is that you also decide to try other Chardonnays. Try some Chardonnays from Burgundy, 
um, try some Chardonnays from other regions and other winemakers and other vintages because you, you can get different styles. You can try a Chardonnay that's 100% stainless steel and then you could get a Rombauer. Now that's a classic Napa Valley um, Chardonnay. They make other beautiful wines and it's giant, right? It's got tons of new oak. Um, experience the difference of those and, uh, and another thing to do which is really fun is Try this 19 Chardonnay with, we, we still have a little bit of our 18 Chardonnay. And so you can see a little bit more um, malolactic fermentation, more leaves stirring, and more oak influence on that vintage to this one. And that'll be, that'll be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, well, thanks everybody for joining us today, talking with us about Chardonnay. We're going to go into our wrap up. If you have any last minute questions, you can always shoot them. But this is the part of the broadcast where we like to tell you about all the fun deals that are coming up, uh, that are going on right now. So Riley, you're going to tell us um, about the staff pick. Yes, Chardonnay is now the new staff pick. Both vintages, 18 and 19, so you could pick up a couple bottles and do a comparison, a little side by side. And that means that uh, you get 5 to 10% an additional discount on top, depending upon what your club membership is. If you buy six bottles. If you buy six bottles or more, yes. And what if they want to get three of the 18 and three of the 19? It works, doesn't it? It's allowed, yeah. Like three plus three is? Six. Boom, you're yeah. going to get the discount. Um, I have an announcement, which is the weather outside is turned to fall. It's lovely out there. And I have put on our patio, I put out five or six fire pits, which are really nice little propane fire pits. That was in order to accomplish uh, and finish my Martha Stewart merit badge, which I received for fixing up the patio, creating well, a patio out there. Yeah, Please come on out um, and enjoy the fall weather before it gets a little too cold here and we got to close the patio. It'll be really nice. And oh, speaking of weather, we got one more announcement, right Riley? What is up? Last but not least, we have the secret discount code of the week. So if you buy two or more bottles online and you put in the order notes beanie, you will get a beanie based on which one you suggested. Ooh. So pick your color, choose wisely. It's an Ooh. online deal. Also comes in black. Also comes in black. Gray, maroon, black. Pom-pom yeah. um, wanna... and no pom-pom. Oh. It's essential to know that. Go for the two, okay? <laughs> um, so thank you Canada for watching today. Thank you everybody. Uh, we really appreciate your support. Remember to uh, wash your hands and call your mother. Cheers. Cheers.